Peace. This is a Sar L. And uh, this piece is entitled Number Man, or Number Man 101. And uh, basically, it's an exhibition of, my, of the culmination of uh, myself building up knowledge over the past 20 years or so, 30 years maybe. And uh, I just wanted to go over a few things that may be pertinent to you or pertinent to today's society. Uh, and it has to deal with uh, astrology, astronomy, numerology, and uh, divination, actually. So, first off, I would like to try to start at the beginning of my journey and that was somewhere before the years of uh, 1993 89 90 91 I started to have uh, questions about life and my place in it and what I was here to do. So, somewhere along my journeys, my early journeys, I heard uh, something about the beginning of the pursuit of knowledge. And this is kind of what caused me to devote my life to the pursuit of knowledge. There was uh, three questions asked are three questions to a person on their beginning of their journey. Question number one, that a seeker of truth, seeker of knowledge must ask themselves is, who am I? Who am I? Question number two, Where did I come from? And question number three, where am I going? As you notice, that's a three part series of questions. Three is the magical number. Things happen in sets of threes. One, two, three. So beginning with the first question, who am I? As I began to ponder this, I devoted myself to going through different schools of knowledge. And at the same time, because receiving knowledge is quite is receptive, but at the same time, I was quite active in my teenage years uh, in the city of Philadelphia, on the music scene, also doing various forms of art. But as I grew, I realized that art is a expression of creativity. The artist travels inward, goes to that special place, the secret place, that place inside, the inner place. And that artist brings out something special for society. And I've dabbled in many forms of art. What I'm presenting you to, with today 
is the culmination of my art because it is an art to read the skies, read the stars. And that's what I'm doing here. And that was the beginning of answering the question of who am I? So fast forward, maybe 20 years or so, 15 or 20 years or so, to just a couple years ago, after studying and researching, seeking, I found out that I was only seeking myself and that there was only myself to find. And I'm the only one that could answer the question of who am I? Just like you're the only one that can answer the question of who you are. So this is a snapshot, a picture into how I found myself. Yeah. So on this piece of paper in one of my pads in which I document my journey, uh, I ran across a movie one day and it's kind of a funny story because sometimes it's the small things that make you realize that uh, nothing is a coincidence and that synchronicity is always at play. So I was watching a movie one day. The movie was entitled uh, CQ, the letters CQ, C. Q. And um, halfway through the movie, uh, some words flashed on the screen and it repeated in a sequence, C, Q, over and over again, C, Q. And then it flashed on the screen, uh, seek you, S, E, E, K. Y-O-U, seek you. So it was a play on words, a pun. Sometimes there's truth in puns. Uh, so then I, it automatically attracted my attention because I had already realized that C is the third letter. And this is where I started to employ my, uh, my lessons actually. Uh, so I realized that C was the third letter and Q was the 17th letter. That already stuck out to me because 317 is my birthday, which is uh, St. Patty's Day, of course. So when I saw CQ from the title of the movie, it reverberated, it rang in my, in my mind. But then when they flash on the screen, CQ, seek you, I started to add up the letters of the words CQ with uh, simple gematria. Simple gematria is different from Hebrew gematria or even different from the Arabic gematria, which is called uh, abjad. Gematria is the assigning of one letter to one number in a progression in the order of a particular alphabet. So in the case of English, A is one and B is two and so on until Z is 26. So when I took the, the word CQ, S is 19, E is five, E is five, K is 11, and that came out to 40. Okay, no big deal, but I already knew that 40 is also 
the number for Buddha, and many other things. And 40 is, a, is how you divide, one of the ways to divide the circle of 360, which is really all there is, because 360 is a complete circle, 360 degrees, it's everything around you. It's your circumference. Your cipher, as some may say. It encompasses your aura, basically. So, but it's also the completion of anything, even in the case of a project or a cycle of a planet returning to its original point and all things return home all things return home everything is a cycle so that word seek and I was always a seeker but that's 40 then I did the math for the word you and that was 25 15 and 21 which equals 61. So I added 40 and 61, and that brought me to this uh, rather magical number called 101 or 101. And that's sort of like a pun as well because 101 is the beginning chorus in anything. So this piece is entitled Number Man or Number Man 101. Introduction to me, myself and I, which is also a reflection of you. So seeking myself or you seeking yourself that brought me to 101. So what I knew already and what I had learned over my time, even studying under different masters that had gave me bits and pieces uh, along the road. They say that a, a master leaves his footprints clearly marked so that those that come after him or her can find the way. So what I knew was that all numbers have to make sense because math is the language of the universe. Numbers is how energies speak. Numbers is the only true language, are the only true language. It's almost like numbers are the letters which make up the words that the universe speaks. Okay, so 101 and any other number, and this right here is the missing piece. 101 has to be put on the circle or the wheel of 360 degrees. Everything, every number is but an aspect within 360 degrees because 360 degrees is all there is huh. because it's a full circle and each of those degrees speak and each of those degrees say something is up to you or up to the seeker to understand or to divine what the universe is saying if that is your
persuasion if you want to know. So when I put 101 on a circle of 360 degrees, that brought me to the house of cancer. And cancer, now I'm not going to do an introductory course on astrology. Hopefully, the true seeker that is listening to this and watching this will understand that and have a prelim, lim, preliminary and elementary understanding of what the zodiac is, what the circle is, and hopefully have a understanding of their own birth sign at the least. Maybe their moon sign, maybe their what, what sign was on the ascendant when they were born. So when I put 101 on the circle of 360, I got to the house of cancer. All the houses incorporate 30 degrees. But it's not enough to stop there and say that each house is 30 degrees because the whole circle is 360 degrees. So you have to bring it to its fullest heights, higher and higher and higher. So you leave the number as the number is, 101, without breaking it down into 11 or breaking it down into two. Although those are relevant because you can see the vibration of 101, it has a 11 vibration to it, but it's something added there. It's a, a circle in the middle. It's almost like that circle is almost like a mirror where the one is looking at the one. Again, which brings us all the way back to CQ, 40 and 61 equals 101. And if you are a true seeker, then you know that there is no such thing as coincidence. It's synchronicity, things happening at the same time as if it was planned you get a peek into the workings of time and space if you pay attention you always do it shows itself it speaks to you like birds speak to you trees speak to you and those were also schools I went through where the birds began to speak and the trees begin to speak what I'm exhibiting right now is when numbers begin to speak in words. So 101 says many things, but as I showed you, 101 says seek you. So I sought myself, but I didn't stop there. A key word of the house of cancer is home. Home is your place of security, where you feel secure. Home is the mother. That's your original home. Cancer is the fourth house. A lot of important things happen in the fourth house. It's your security. Not to mention each house is divided into three sections which is pretty much common knowledge. And each section is 10 degrees, which those are called deacons or decanates. 101 is in the second deacon of the house of cancer. 91 begins the house of cancer. 
101 begins the second deacon of cancer. And 111 begins the third deacon of the house of cancer. But calling your attention to the zodiac laid out here, I have one piece, uh, which is basically saying the same thing as what is laying here, which is the zodiac clock of destiny. Now, this is a, a old poster from 1927 before the Great Depression, where people like us, knowledge seekers, truth seekers, were putting information like this down almost a hundred years ago, and even before that. So I have this, this is, a, this is my template. One day I looked and I said, because this Zodiac Clock of Destiny has so much information on it, as, as you can see in the middle, it has the deacons, the 36, uh, 36 uh, sections of the whole 360. It has the fixed stars along the outside, and then it has keywords in the middle. So... I ordered this off the internet and I didn't know what purpose it was going to serve me. I just knew that I wanted it because it looked awesome and I could actually use the star, the planets and put it on here. So one day I looked and I said, this fits right on top and it will allow me to consider both charts at the same time. And that same day I had a revelation because I created something else, which is a little circle, handwritten, of the ancient Egyptian deacons, 36 deacons that the ancient Egyptians charted and called their 36 godly energies that rule space and time at 10 degrees 10 degree sections of the zodiac each house having three deacons so when I put the 101 on the chart and I considered everything before me I saw that 101 lines up with the serious star and I'm being serious the serious star the serious star is the brightest star in the sky so once I saw 101 everything started coming together Sirius specifically is uh, 14 degrees cancer 14 degrees Cancer is 104 degrees out of the 360, which comes in right about here. Which comes in right about here. And on this uh, handwritten chart, you can see the letters SPDT, which is the, the metal netter or the Hieroglyphic way of saying Sirius, which is Sepidet. And that's in the house of home. So I, I started to think, what else is 101? And why was home so pertinent to me? Why was, it, why was this speaking to me in the way it was speaking to me? Then I considered that my home itself was 101 meaning that Philadelphia is 101 when you add P-H-I-L-A 
D-E-L-P-H-I-A. Which is 16, 8, 9, 12, 1, 4, 5, 12. 16, 8, 9, and 1. All of that equals 101. So that's a coincidence or a synchronicity. Philadelphia is 101. CQ is 101. And I wondered why all of these things were speaking to me and all saying the same thing. So that was one part. Then, not only that, and this goes to the initial question of who am I? The three part question. CQ. C is three. Q is 17. As I mentioned before, 317 is my birthday, the day I was born. So CQ was already speaking to me. But then something else stuck out to me. During my travels, I realized that in order to grow, sometimes it's necessary to reinvent yourself. Uh, realizing that you may have different parts of yourself. So in pursuit of exploring myself, I found it necessary for a name change. And uh, not that I didn't love the name I was born with because I love it and I love my mother who gave it to me but at some point when you become self-aware you may become something that only you knew you were like you had a secret with yourself but now you want it to not be a secret. So I changed my name. But I just didn't pick a name. I had al always vibrated with the ancient Egyptian deity called by most Osiris. But at a young age, I realized that that was my vibration. And I, and I knew that the metal netter or the hieroglyphic name for him was Asar. So I became Asar. And with a name change comes a change in vibration. My original name, Kenyatta, carries a certain energy. And Asar carries a different energy. Asar begins with A. Kenyatta begins with K. With that magical 11, the 11th letter. But A is more assertive. When I changed my name, people treated me different. <laughs> this is a it was like a phenomena uh, to experience that. And I've had several such rebirths or incarnations in this same lifetime. I don't mean a different life. But as a SAR, I realized a few things about myself because there are no coincidences. Everything means something if you can read it. So, C is three. The vibration of a SAR 
is 1, 19, 1, and 18. And when you add those up, that equals 39. And of course, 39 is 39 degrees. Num all the numbers are degrees. Degrees of what? Degrees of 360. Remember that. So, when you take 39, 39 degrees is in the house of Scorpio. I'm, excuse me, is in the house of Taurus, which is the opposite of Scorpio. It's in the first deacon. So, coincidentally, Taurus is my moon sign. So right there, unbeknownst to me at the time, I was naming myself a vibration of that which was already in the inside because your moon sign is who you feel that you truly are on the inside. Though people on the outside may not see that. They may not see you as that. March 17th, 317 makes me a Pisces, a true Pisces as my sun sign. But that's what the world experiences me as. But in the inside, when I think of myself, I'm seeing myself as a Taurus. So three and nine, the 39 from Asar equals 12. Well, when you break it down, it equals 12. And any num nine is the magical number. Any number next to nine becomes itself again because nine is the magical number. Three is the magic number, but three times three is nine. The Trinity. Back to those three questions again. So, three and nine is 12. One and two is three. At that point, I saw that three was C. The title of the movie was CQ. So not only is three what Asar equals, but three is also my birth month. Not only that, I'm born on the 17th day, which corresponds to the letter Q. So, it doesn't stop there because although 17 equals the letter Q, I named myself Asar L. L spelled E-L. And all of this is unbeknownst to me at the time. The letter E equals 5. And the letter L equals 12. 5 and 12. 5 and 12 is 17. So CQ has a special meaning to me, to say the least, because 317 is not only my birthday, but 317 is Asar L. So years later, I realized that I named myself after my own birthday, which may not seem deep, but the way the mind works and the way the mind attracts to itself everything it needs and has the answers which you may not even know you were seeking. So, over time, I've experienced a wholeness of self. The wholeness of who I am. 